Hello, 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 uh, and good evening. Back to another live stream from the Black. Church. Giving a shout out there to my sponsor, Mr. Tools and Machinery. So, good evening, good evening, good evening. Oh, it's a long time since we all chatted last night. So, uh, Nicola is over. I'll just say hello. Hello. So, Nicola's manning the chat. So, uh, what I'm going to do is move the camera around a bit on the tripod. Title said and describe it really for beginners. So, if you've ever wanted to get into pen turning and thinking, oh, yeah, I'd like to do that, but how do you do it? Well, I'm going to explain and demystify everything. It's a piece of cake, lots of fun. Uh, let me just. I'm going to. All right. Nicola's a couple of minutes behind, so hope, hopefully, I'll just have a look. I'll just come yeah, yeah, come. Nicola's just going to come over and uh, make sure that I'm getting these bits in frame. So I remember, just want the, the yeah, pen pad. That's, that's about right, right, okay. So, right. So basically, we're going to do a simple pen kit this evening. And can I just say, actually, we need to be out of here by 8.30 because uh, yours truly is on, it's confirmed we're on Radio 4 tonight, the Blindwood Turner, uh, interviewed by Tom Walker. Uh, it's 8.40pm, Radio 4. You can catch it online, on your radio, uh, all the usual places, 8.40, and the programme's called In Touch. So, uh, yeah, I'd be grateful if you could listen and give me your support and uh, your feedback and stuff. Anyway, let's get on with the pen kit. So it's a simple pen kit, it's a, what's called a Sierra pen kit and I'm doing this for beginners because there's just one piece of turning involved. Some pens have two pieces etc. So we'll just keep it simple with one piece of wood this evening. In this particular pen kit, let's have a feel, you have a mechanism and a spring which is there. You have the Nib section. What colour is this one, Nicola? Gold or chrome? Um, I can't see it, just turn around. Uh, it's a gold one. Thank you. Uh, you have the end cap assembly. You have the refill matron there. Some, uh, some refills have sort of like a, a wax protectant over the end, which you just need to scratch off. Uh, and it comes with a brass tube. Uh, now there's lots and lots of different pen kits, lots and lots of different tube sizes, which means inevitably lots and lots of drill bit sizes uh, uh, and bushing sizes. I'll just say that as I'm walking, uh, walking you through this, I will say the things I would recommend you get, but I might recommend them, but you don't necessarily need them. Uh, so anyway, the first thing I need to do is to cut this wooden blank and it's a piece of bog oak one of those 5,000 year old jobbies uh, so I need to cut this piece of wood approximate to length but leave it a bit longer than usual so we have enough to square off the ends squaring off the ends will make for a nice fit when we come to finish and assemble it all so what I need to do is take this brass tube and this piece of wood over to the bandsaw so I'm going to pick you guys up. So I'm just navigating my way over to the band. So are you seeing this, Nicola? Yeah. Is that in frame? Um, it's always slightly um, delayed when I'm on the computer. Um, but yeah, you're on the band saw now. So right. I can see a piece of wood on it. Okay. Well, that piece of wood is there just for me as a guide. So what I tend to do is you can measure this with calipers and things. First thing is, first thing I do is hold it against the fence at the back, bring it up to the blade so it's squashed between the blade and the fence and then I back it off. A few millimetres. So we've got some wiggle room there. What is it you said you're turning? Oh, right. Wayne the woodturner said he's turning a 5,000 year old jobby. Yeah. 
piece of bog oak. So the uh, that set now the fence is the right length plus four mil to give us room to square off. So I hold, just put that brass tube. Now I know after doing hundreds of pen kits, uh, this piece of wood is there because I like to use the mitre, but obviously that's not doing anything. So I just provide uh, a sacrificial uh, fence up here on the mitre gauge. So I know my if I keep my thumb and finger riding along the fence, I know that I am well clear of that blade. It's just a confidence thing and something I am very happy with doing. So I'm going to fire that up. Right, that is... I think the blade's just come off. Uh, <laughs> luckily I'd made the cut. <laughs> so the blade's jumped off there uh, for some reason. But anyway, there it is cut uh, and you never reach in for that piece until everything's stopped. Uh, so that's cool. I'll put the blade back on tomorrow. Steve said yeah. what folk don't realise is that Bog Oak got its name because cavemen used oak trees for toilets. Yeah, that, that's right, or for toilet paper. <laughs> so, right, I know you're a bit laggy, Nicola, but when you're in, when you're ready in a minute, can you? I'm just gonna use. You're on the lathe now. All right, okay. So how's that? Just panning up a bit. How's that? Um, yeah, you probably just need that better. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so my glamorous assistant. So now. You can drill this out uh, by holding it in a vise, finding uh, the most drill. You can use a drill. The most accurate and the safest and the quickest way for me is to drill it through on my Axminster 1218 VS. So I, always, I have this permanently set up now for drilling out pen blanks. So I hold it in the jars and just Make sure that it's approximately lined up. I just just have to sort of like sometimes adjust it in case I put it in a bit cockeyed, and then find God damn it. So uh, I've got the correct drill bit size for this pen kit, and it's some weird size like. 10.72 or 10.64 anyway i'm going to push that up there in place lock it off at the back and then we're going to start drilling through it's nice and steady i generally keep the speed quite low so as not to heat the wood up too much <coughs> and risk cracking it So it's nice and slow. I've heard some people when they're doing pens sort of like really cranking it through. Uh, this is a tough old piece of oak that's been uh, buried in the ground for thousands of years. So I certainly wouldn't want to force it. Quite a nice smell. To me it's letting off almost a, a toffee caramel sort of smell. Nice and slow. And then periodically, I'm going to pull it back, wind the bobbin in, <laughs> then we can push back in. So I hope you're following so far. So you cut the piece of wood to length, drill the correct size hole. These pen kits have instructions online and uh, a lot of them come with instructions. Uh, but you can listen to great tutorials like this on YouTube uh, for great pen videos. Uh, I'll give a shout out to Bob RJB uh, who does amazing pen videos, uh, so you can check him out also. Um, can I just give you some comments? Yeah. Uh, Julius shared, say, what pen kits are you doing? 
I am doing a, a Craft Pro Kit pen. It's from Axminster and it's called the Sierra pen. Now it's easy to do and it's a substantial feeling pen. It's got beautiful balance. I've made and sold dozens of the things. Uh, you feel like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, don't you? Well balanced, nice feel, uh, easy to turn. What's not to like about the Sierra pen? Uh, they're about a five. Um, MP sniper says should turn a slow mode in delayed. Delayed? That's as slow as it's going to go on this ratio. That's slow enough. But yeah, turn it as slow as you want. Right, that. So we're all the way through there. Of course, again, stop the lathe. Uh, don't go anywhere near that chuck. And then we have a hold, a hold, a hole drilled all the way through. So happy days. So spin me back around here. So hopefully Nicola's going to just watch me. Oh, so I right. want people to see me just scuff this. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, the light's not great there. You're sort of blocking the light a bit there. Well... Yeah, that one the but, mm. uh, you, um, you're gonna have to come in. So basically, I've got a, a piece better. piece of sandpaper here. Uh, I've got my brush tube, and what I do: hold, rub. Spin, then these brass tubes can have some coating on them and we need uh, to scuff it up so we have good adhesion between the brass tube and the wood. So I'll just do this for a minute, have a feel, feel a smooth area there. Obviously you guys can see what you're doing. Yeah, that should be pretty. Yeah, that's scuffed up all over. So we'll just move that now. So what I need to do now is glue this tube into the wood. Uh, because of the time, you can use epoxy, you can use CA glue, which which viscosity you prefer. Uh, I think I use prefer a medium, so it's not running all over my fingers as much. Uh, you can use epoxy. Uh, if I was doing this pen as a commission, uh, I would epoxy it and give it the, the, the cure time. Uh, a five minute epoxy is generally good enough for pens and I leave it a couple of hours before I turn it. Anyhow, uh, let's just feel for... Is that? I've got the glue. Can I ask you some questions? Yes, please. Uh, where do you sell them as I'm thinking of selling mine but don't know where? You, well, set up a website to do it. Yeah. Etsy. Yeah. Word of mouth. Carry a case with them in, and everywhere you go, and friends and family. Uh, craft fairs, village fairs, Christmas fairs. Commissions. Commissions. Yeah. Once the word spreads and your pens are, you know, getting a following. Yeah. yeah. There's lots of different avenues. Whatever suits you, really. Yeah. Uh, depends how serious you want to take it. Uh, if you want to become a full-time professional pen turner, uh, you chuck everything at it, I suppose. So, can you tell the grit number? Sorry, yeah, that's 80. 80 grit, uh, because I do like to scuff these up uh, quite severely. Maybe that's a bit too much, but with being blind again, always belts is me. Uh, I'm always like over-engineering everything. 
So hopefully we'll get this, this glue. So I'm just dripping the glue, splodge of glue on there. Feel for the pen blank. That's going to put it in whilst just twisting it a little. Steve says when you're going to make your first dart set. I'm not. I'm going to commission you to do one. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't, don't know. I'd like to. And I'm going to hit this with the with the activator. So that'll uh, get that glue cured. Ready. And then tap the glue out. Brain. And then, I know some people don't like doing it. I just give the that's a bit of a wipe with my fingers. Don't use tissue, it'll stick to it instantly. Uh, so, uh, don't want to do that. So, basically, I'm coming over behind you now, Nicola, because I'm going to square it off. Oh, right, okay. I'm having to move. Yeah, so, that, you can feel, you can feel the heat in that, uh, as the chemical reaction starts. So, come with me folks. We're gonna slowly and carefully bring you over to my... It's only gonna take a second and then you can have this back. So, can you line that up please, Nicola, on the old uh, belt and disc sander? Yep. Now sometimes the glue can just come over the edge and, and give it quite a, a little bulbous, almost like a glue blister. So I'll just get rid of that on the top shelf. And then what I do is hold that against there, keep spinning it around. And I can tell by sound, I could tell that the sound had changed there, so it was kissing brass. Keep working. There we go, and I could detect the change of sound again. Give that. So that's it, only takes a minute. So that now, I know that that, because I check it periodically, that fence is perpendicular to the disc. I always check it from time to time uh, with a square to make sure that that is squared off. Perpendicular to this, so it's nice and square. So. Basically, we're ready for some uh, turning action. Okay. It's good this, isn't it? Yeah. So, we're going to put this back. <laughs> mm. Like filming on location. So, if you need to... Let me just move that over there. Now, if you can position that where you, where you think is best. I'm going to have a swig of tea. While Nicola does that. Okay. I think that's okay. Okay. So, right, you have here now my uh, Precision Pro lathe. Uh, so, not only is it amazing for pens, but you can do finials and uh, tiny work and precision work. Variable speed. Uh, and it came supplied with the mandrel supported in a collet chuck. So there is also a mini chuck available for this and a mini face plate. So great bit of kit. So anyway, how is this work now supported on the lathe? Well, it's held in place and supported by the... ...bank with the tube in it, which is a metal that you can come to. Now, 
<coughs> is held in place and secured by the means of bushings. Now, uh, I would strongly recommend that you get the right bushing set for your pen because you can turn down to the bushings accurately and then you're going to be provided with some uh, elegant flowing lines and everything's going to fit together. The engineers out there might not want to bother with bushings. You might like using calipers and verniers and you can be checking the diameter of the pen parts and be turning the wood down, checking with calipers. That way, if you want, you don't have to buy bushings. I would recommend it. I use them. You don't have to. You don't have to get a specific pen lathe. Lathe. You can get mandrels, one moss tapers, number two moss tapers, number three moss taper to fit any lathe. So uh, you don't have to get a dedicated pen lathe. It just makes things easy for me. I have a pen lathe. I have a, another lathe set up for drilling out and then my main lathe. It just makes things quicker and easier for me in the workshop. Uh, the little steel bushings and they fit into the end. Uh, one in each end of the wood blank and then one end's going to go against the collet, the headstock end. And then this has a mandrel saver. It ha it's a revolving live uh, center, but it has a hole. So the hole passes over the mandrel. So rather than putting all its pressure on the end of the mandrel, uh, where you can risk over tightening it and bending the metal rod, this applies weight through the bushings, not the mandrel bar, uh, and it prevents bending. So that's a good little thing. So we're gonna, I'm gonna slide the first bushing over the mandrel, then I'm gonna slide the pen blank over, pushing it onto the first bushing, and the bushing has a, a, a thinner diameter there to go inside the tube. It's a nice snug fit. Second mandrel goes into place uh, and this came with different spacers and bushings. So this now gets slid all the way up. That hollow centre is going over the mandrel. It's touching the bushings and when it touches you lock it down. wind the tail centre up till it's applying firm pressure and that now is clamped securely the piece is clamped securely on the mandrel and we're ready to turn so again nothing complicated it's all very easy and I'm taking my time to explain this all nice and slow so just getting the tool rest for this little fella tool rest here so I'm just making sure that, that tool rest is perpendicular to the banjo and I'm just going to gently present that up it's pretty cool make sure just like any other bit of turning that the blank isn't fouling on the tool rest lock everything down Zip my smock up. Can I just read this little bit? Yeah. Um, do, do, do you, don't you use a barrel trimmer for the drill? I used to. And yes you can. I've got one. Uh, I've got one there, a barrel trimmer. Uh, the other part is over here. So yes, I've got a barrel trimmer. Uh, so that that bar fits inside, depending on what it comes supplied. This is a barrel trimmer kit. Comes supplied with different uh, diameter rods to suit the different diameter pen tubes, uh, and then it has this. It's almost like a four prong drive spur. Uh, so you can attach that to your drill or your pillar drill uh, and square it off that way it's quick and easy uh, I just I, I just I started using my belt sander for it 
and I just prefer that method. But these are very quick and effective uh, barrel trimmers. Um, David Julie says a piece of raw rubber can clean your sand and disc. Yes, I know. I've got one over there. Yes, it's a belt and disc sander cleaner. It's a piece of yeah, raw natural rubber and you hold it against... Uh, was that a question or was he answering a comment there? Well, it's just... Um, I think it's just a statement really, just to let you know. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't getting into cleaning belt and disc sanders there, but sorry, yeah, uh, mm. that'd be a different video, I suppose, cleaning belt and disc sanders. Uh, JDS just doing stuff has come over from our bay. Uh, feed free. That's um, about easing a bit, but... Probably because I'm moving it around. Yeah, it could be as well. Yeah. Um, We're probably stretching the limits of our yeah. uh, broadband connection in here. That there's a lot of. You can get between centre bushes now. All right, well, that's, that's cool. Steve. That's cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else? There's uh, JDS just doing stuff, says, please tell me you're passing on your skills to other visually impaired people. I guess red tape would be a big no-no in a college. Uh, no, there's, uh, there's lots and lots of different college courses. And uh, we mentioned last night we were talking to John Furness uh, via email. And we're, uh, we're going to soon have him as a guest. He's a master carpenter in America who's been blind since the age of 16. Uh, no, I am passing on this uh, to both the blind and visually impaired to inspire and motivate them and the able-bodied. Uh, anything's possible. If you take your time uh, and be careful what you're doing and, you know, uh, don't take any silly chances, uh, feel free to have a go at whatever you want. You know, if you need supervision at first, just until you find your feet, then, then so be it. But... Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no to anybody. Everybody should experience whatever they want to experience. Always be careful and take time. Why not? So, uh, basically, so it's the same with this. Uh, I'm going to feel for where I need to be. I'm going to get the lathe started. It's coming up to speed. So, just roughing it out. The greedy cut there, Christopher. So, just taking your time. Knocking the corners off. I will stop there and have a feel. So yeah, that's no, 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 nearly to round. So again, I've stopped the lathe, so I need to have a feel. You just take your time. You don't want to go too fast, especially when you're new to pen turning. You do not want this going below them bushings because then when the pen's assembled, the wood will be lower than the metal fittings and it, there'll be a little ridge. It doesn't feel great at all. So uh, that's all the corners knocked off. So then you can move if those so uh, desireth to uh, a spindle gouge. So
daylight. I I find that I find that hilarious. What's wrong with the northern accent? Salt of the earth as lot. So I'm continuing continuing to work this out. Obviously, start stop feel start stop feel. And it's amazing to think this piece of wood was buried in the ground for all them um, thousands of years. Find it incredible. So, of course, you can use carbide when you're doing this. I'm getting super chat money. Yeah, um, Steve's um, given you five euros, um, and Stuart's given you two dollars. Whoa, thank you so very oh, much. That's cool. That is so cool. Thank you so very much, uh, really greatly appreciated uh, and all, all that goes such you know a long way to keeping us in the workshop doesn't it Nicola? It does. Thank you yeah, so very it much. Makes uh, a massive difference. It does. Um, MP Sniper says I don't live in a country to be able to pay, I send you love. Well love right back at you Snipey. Cheers everybody, cup of tea. Right, so this now, can people see this actually on the lathe, Nicola, this? Um, it's a bit sideways on. Right, well, it's down to the bush, well, it's nearly down to the bushings. And the, the best advice I can give you is if you can just catch your thumbnail on the end, you're about right, which I can. Because now you can uh, just sand it. And take it down to the bushings and it will be a perfect fit. If you took it down to the bushings, exactly down to the bushings with your tooling, it had better be perfect because if you go, oh right, yeah, now I'm going to sand it, uh, you're taking it below the bushings and therefore below the diameter of the metal pen part. So just always be wary of that and if you're using calipers instead of bushings, always be checking. Uh, you can take wood off, you can't really, well you can stick it back on but it'd look like a dog's dinner uh, and it'd take a long time to get it sorted. So that's, that's turned now down to where I'm happy with it being. So this is a piece, like I say, a piece of bog oak uh, and Start with some one. <laughs> start with one twenty. <laughs> David's given us fifty DKK. What's the, uh, Danish? Krona. Yeah. Whoa. Thank you so very much, David. What does that equate to? No idea. Whoa. Sounds impressive. Uh, so we're going to get the speed a lot lower now. Same as the sanding. Uh, and I fold the paper thin like that. Uh, sanding too far left and right and be sanding your bushings. Because over time you're going to diminish the diameter of your bushings. So over time your bushings will be the correct, incorrect size. 
We have earmarked this pen as a gift for somebody, haven't we, Nicola? Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell where it's going? Uh, yeah, I think it's somewhere you can really show me. Um, last week when we went to uh, Northampton we had um, drinks and cake in a little tea room next door to the village hall and um, they only took cash. I very rarely actually have any cash, um, I'm so used to paying by card so we, we couldn't pay them but they very kindly said oh we'll just do a bank transfer when you get home. So that's what so we did. Kind of them. Yeah. Um, so we were able to have something to eat and drink without having to drive off again and try and find somewhere. Um, so Chris said that he would make them a pen so that they could use it um, in uh, in the shop, in the shop uh, for taking um, orders and whatnot. So that's where it's going to be going. So it's going to the Old Forge Tea Room. As a thank you yeah. for extending us some credit. They didn't need to do that. They could have said, sorry, you know, you yeah. have to go and find a cash machine. But, yeah, we were a long way from home, city boy, <laughs> weren't we? We were glad of that. Um, well, I had a latte, you had a tea, um, and we had um, a, tart. a tart with cherries in it. It's all nice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just being very methodical here. When the wood turn is um, within two times of well. Woohoo! Thank you, Wayne. That's really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> Thank you for the support. So I'm feeling, as this is, I'm sure it's the same as a sighted pen turner, as this is spinning on the mandrel. I'm running my fingers along it, constantly checking that I'm not going too far. It's such an old uh, piece of wood. I'm going really, really slow. I'm applying pretty light pressure. The second me time. Uh, tell Baz what wood it is. Hi Baz, it is bog oak. Now, uh, it's the last piece remaining from some I got from British made pen kits. So that's sort of like Dan's. Uh, from Taylor's Murfield, their uh, empire. And it did come with uh, little cards of authenticity, giving its age and date, because it had been carbon dated, and it's thousands of years old. But I haven't got any of those cards left. Uh, you just have to take my word for it. It's a very, very, very old piece of bog oak. I'd say, um, I've heard it's amazing and very expensive. I don't, I, I don't think it's that expensive. It depends. For a pen blank, it's, you know, I couldn't give you an exact price, but it's not like, well, you can't ever afford it. It's might be a couple of quid more than other wood species, but... It smells nice. So, uh that was that one done, 120. I'm going to move on to 180 now. So just taking my time. So for those of you that didn't hear before, uh, Radio 4 tonight, 8 for the blind wood turner on the In Touch program. Uh, so you can hear me and Tom, the uh, the journalist, who incidentally. He's been blind his whole life. He was born visually impaired. Uh, was hanging out and making noise, so pretty cool. Still turning whilst I'm holding my finger.
Welcome to LiveChat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community guidelines. Right. That was what you, you're back. Buffering and uh, disconnecting. Uh, but anyway, I was just recapping the process if you, if you heard that. Very simple process. Uh, so that's sanded down now to 240. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to get a piece of card to protect the bedways uh, from I'll clean up tomorrow so that's just to protect the bedways so I'm going to feel now for the sanding sealer give it a shake the tissue Now because bog oak is very dark, uh, I don't have to worry about uh, the Yorkshire grit making a, a dark polishing slurry and it staining the wood. Bear in mind if you are using a light coloured wood uh, or acrylics and you're using Yorkshire grit as an abrasive paste and you get it on the bushings the bushings will get that dark uh, carbon polishing slurry and that will stain your work, just bear that in mind this is such a dark piece of wood, this bog oak uh, I don't have to worry about that but consider that uh, you might want to make some sacrificial bushings uh, that won't stain your work uh, don't say I didn't want Wing you. Brilliant. Keep on turning smiling face licking lips energy. Face with heart shaped eyes energy. Face blowing a kiss energy. <laughs> that was just a, uh, a text from a brother. So I'm just denibbing it now with a piece of scotch bright. That goes in the back sky rocket. And then we'll just get some more sanding sealer on that. Put that to one side and finish with that so I don't knock it over. So tomorrow we are... I'll be on Thursday evening in North Wales. So. Oh, very good. There we go. He nib again, second coat. You can have a feel. That's feeling very nice. So, on to that's your. Tomorrow I'm getting my kit ready for a demo on Thursday evening. It's the North Wales... Sorry, Mr. Yeah. Cheshire, and North Wales. Cheshire and North Wales Wood Turning uh, Club Association. So I've got a demo in a place called Mould. M-O-L-D. Uh, I'm demoing Thursday evening there. Bit of a drive but not horrendous. Uh, probably about an hour and a quarter drive, something like that. So I'm applying Yorkshire Grit original slowly at first, we're working it well in. You know the score folks. Slowly, slowly. Get it worked in. Keep working it in. You need to get it worked in. Let it do its work. Don't rush. Mouse Darkie. Our details on the website. Details are on the website, yeah. Um, Move into a clean piece of tissue now. Turn the speed up. And 
and that should be fine at that. The Yorkshire Grit original worked in. So when when we send this, we we'll wraps it and puts it in a nice box and does some nice wrapping. She'll put a nice little letter in explaining that it's a piece of uh, bog oak that's five thousand years old. Well, I think it was four thousand and something. Mm. So, uh, if you say approximately four thousand year old piece of bog oak in the letter. What are you using, David? Jeans asking. I used Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire grit. And now I'm using Yorkshire grit microfine. <laughs> so I'm applying it by hand mm -hmm. first. Rubbing it in. And like I said, because this is a piece of dark wood, uh, any staining from the polish and bushings isn't going to affect it. So we're just working at a moderate speed here at the minute, working it well in. Yorkshire okay, okay, Great on Minster. I said Axe Minster, tools and machinery. Machinery. Uh, an Axe Minster tools and machinery pen kit and bushings and smock. Uh, So move to a clean bit of tissue, turn the speed up. And that should be fine and dandy like sour candy. Pretty cool. So now we are on to the Polishing, uh, for which oh, I'll better put the uh, lid back on me. Me grit. <whistles> Feel for again. Give that a shake. Always remember to give your your products a shake because uh, a lot of them have. Uh, ingredients that separate, solvents, etc. A couple of shakes like you're putting it on your fish and chips. Get the fit from polish works in. Second coat now, let that build up, he's actually online at the hospital. Oh, well, he's not doing a live tonight, but will tomorrow at nine. Okay, all right, Steve. So say hello to his son. Yeah, oh. yeah, I was just going to. <laughs> I hope your son's leg is all right and it's nothing too serious. Bloody kids, eh? <laughs> so that's that's polished now. And it's feeling wonderful. So I can discuss uh, and what I'm going to do. It's carefully pull back I'm just going to put this over here, you'll see where in a moment
off now. Protect those bushings up so I don't use them for that. Put the bushings away so I don't lose them. Quickly as I can now. Very good. I've unplugged that lathe, so I'm going to carry it over there out of the way so I can bring my pen press up. Uh, if you do get one of these lathes, never pick it up by the, the motor. You could snap it all off and do some damage. Hold them by the hand wheel at the headstock end and the hand wheel uh, or the bed. And then you can just... So that's there. Just feel for this now. Dean of networking event. Is my little... J leaving now. It's through there, people. Uh, our nearest and dearest, just letting them know that I'm on the way. So, box there, wooden, the turn wood blank that's been polished there. It's velvet, it's protected, don't want to scratch it. And then, on this old piece of uh, architrave here, uh, it works wonders for just crilling the parts. Uh, left to right, nib at the left. Uh, and then continuing to the right, ending at the end cap assembly. So, it's good to lay things out in the right order. It just makes things easier for me. Uh, stops things getting knocked over and dropped everywhere. This pen press here, it's another expense. Great if you can afford it, makes things a lot easier and it looks pretty cool as well. If you haven't got one of those, you can use one of these quick clamps with a ratchet. They work fine, I use them at the beginning. If you've got a traditional bench vise, use a bench vise. Make sure you uh, cover the jaws with something soft so you don't mark and damage the pen parts or make some wooden jaws to fit. Or you can use your pillar drill, bench drills and fabric cobble a doodad to do it that way. So lots of different ways, uh, there's always a way. Uh, make everything you need if you want to. Right, so the pen press. Very easy, easy assembly. The first thing I'm going to do, that probably needs to come a bit further uh, up. I am going to, luckily this, the Sierra pen, the bushings are the same diameter at either end. So you can use either end of this pen uh, for the nib end. So I'm going to put that in place, just holding it there in place. Then I'm going to... Timothy Saltzman, um, hello, first time live view from Texas here. Yee yeah! Who comes from Texas? Sheldon. Yeah. Uh, well, hello Texas. So, so great to have you here, Tim. So I'm just gingerly pushing this in now. Making sure everything's lined up. Taking my time. Again, you don't want to go and wrench down on things. You can crack and split the wood. So that's cool. So we have there now the end cap pushed home. So what we need to do then 
is get the refill that goes over the thin nib end and let's just feel for that so that goes over there and then that just goes in and I just push that through to make sure that the spring sometimes you can trap the spring uh, against the wall the internal wall of the nib uh, so just make sure that everything's in there simple now mechanism you can feel for what has the open end and it has the thread there that slides over the refill and while supplying pressure you thread it home and then we have a check oh I've got to move the camera down a bit and then we have a check that the mechanism is that better is operating Okay, so just to recap, uh, I put the spring over the refill, pushed it through, uh, slowly through the, the mechanism over the refill, applying pressure, threading home, and then this portion that's got the end cap already on it, that's just a push friction fit over there. Uh, and let's just check now. So that's uh, a a very a very graceful Sierra, easy to turn. It's taken even taken me a bit longer than normal because I've been trying to uh, explain everything uh, in in good detail for beginners. Uh, so uh, it's a Sierra pen with a four thousand year old piece of bog oak. So. Obviously, what you need to do now is because you've had your grubby, greasy fingers all over it, assembling it. Give it another fettle. Another polish. Again, we can have another check that everything works fine. Before this goes out, Nicola will write... The brake, the ink, and the refills fine. And then, even when I'm carrying that from the workshop to the house, Butterfingers me would drop that on. To take that in the house, I will wrap that in that pocket, find it, and stand on it. So tissue and box, uh, especially seeing as this is a gift for the the uh, people at the Old Forge Tea Room, uh, as a thank you for looking after us the other day. So I'm going to just put that back on there and then I'm going to get the camera uh, and move it around and let you have a closer look unless you want to do that Nicola. Yeah. yeah. So it's a piece of uh, bog oak so it has got a very open grain pattern. Uh, it's oak and because of its uh, many thousands of years in the in the peat box, uh, it's taken on a very dark ebonized finish, almost black, I suppose. Nicola, is it? It is. It's very very dark. It looks good though because that's got um, you know black at the black top and gold. And black at the so it's a very very elegant stylish pen. Yeah. Uh, it's a piece of cake to turn. Great for a beginner. A beginner can knock these out for fun uh, after a little practice. Uh, and you've just seen a blind guy do it. Uh, so you, you newbies out there uh, that want to do it, that's that's fine. So did people see the pen there? Yeah, um, well, let me hold it and then I can just uh, hold it in front of the camera. Don't want me to hold. So... It's, you can see, it's very dark, not the best light or angle here, but um, it is really lovely, that. So, uh, yeah, that piece of bug it's, it's a very, very dark brown. Yeah. Almost as close, there you go. So if you put that back in there, uh, I can 
transport that into the house very carefully. So yeah, uh, beautiful pen kit, Sierra. There's a few different manufacturers out there. This is uh, one of Atsminster's Craft Pro kits, uh, easy. Uh, The pen beautifully balanced, weight in it weighs, uh, so the pen kit's about five or six pound uh, and the the pen blanks vary from a couple of quid up to, you know, for burls and bog oak maybe a tenner each, uh, de depends, but yeah, certainly uh, a beautiful, beautiful gift for, uh, for someone or if someone orders a pen. Uh, and you're just getting into pen turning and you say oh yeah i make this style of pen great for uh, your first few commissions yeah so uh, mike turner said that he's been using taylor's murfield um and he's not tried the axminster ones yet but i said they're both um both good sets of kits yeah 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 i've i've not had any i've not had any problems with any of them uh, to be honest uh and i'm sure there are uh, people out there that might have had problems me personally i haven't uh, the only things uh, that I've had problems with <laughs> is when you do a an Axminster the Crap Pro kits European slimline kit, uh, and you have to sorry, I'm going in a minute. When you have to turn the little tenon down for the ring on the on website. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the European slimline pen kit. You turn a little tenon. And then I glue the the centre ring over the tenon. Sometimes I manage to get a bit of glue either on the pen or on the ring, and I screw it up that way. Uh, but uh, apart from that, uh, and, and the mechanism, I broke a couple of mechanisms on the European slim just by pushing in too far, uh, and I've had to drill them out and things like that. It's what a nightmare. But again, operator error really. So we're done, folks. Uh, what time are we on, Nicola? Uh, half past eight. Um, Chris, that piece of dado rail fixed next to the pen press just brought one, and looking at the best way to sort it all out, it looks like a great idea. Yes, everything. The the pen press is screwed to this piece of, of chipboard. Yes, this the pen press is screwed to the board. This piece of architrave or dado, whatever you want, is glued down. The old pen case that's got the velvet bottom to protect your pen, that is glued down also. Everything is glued down so that when I pick it up and move it all around, <laughs> nothing falls off. Uh, so yeah, uh, great for if you're doing a pen demonstration. It's all self-contained, yeah. uh, but it's great for me. I know where everything is. You can lay everything out methodically, systematically, keeping everything safe, secure, uh, and again, you, you, you're taking pride and passion in your work and you're protecting it. You've just put you know, a decent amount of time into making a beautiful pen. Don't take any chances. Or if you want, take all the chances you want. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you though. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, of course. Right, folks, we're done. That's another one in the can. We're going now. We're going to get our dirty clothes off uh, and get a drink ready for radio. Check me out wherever you are in the world. If you can be Radio 4 online in 10 minutes, we're uh, on Radio 4. Yeah, the blind wood turner. It was great. And uh, thank you, everybody, for all the super chat donations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm going to have, you know, a warrior chest bump there. Thank you so very much. <laughs> You rock, you guys. You know you do. Uh, it's getting ever nearer to getting back to meet you all again at Maker Central. Uh, and, yeah, Baz, if you come to Cheshire and North Wales tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, Thursday, we'll speak to you there, man. Everybody look after yourselves. Right, we're out of here. Until next time, keep on turning. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Baz Starkey, our detail finish. Button. Finish. <laughs> it never wants to.
to end. I know. Do you want to click it sometime? Alert. I know. I'm just... Are you sure that you want to stop? Are you sure that you want to yeah. stop? Are you sure that you want...